Hello, let's talk about the personal statement. As you probably know, the personal statement is becoming more and more important as we're seeing more programs moving to a more holistic evaluation. And keep in mind that the U.S. Enlisted One is going to pass and fail, so more holistic it is. These days, you should expect admission committees to actually read your personal statement in detail. Historically, the personal statement is divided in three sections that most applicants would try to address. The first section is why do you like this specialty in particular? The second section would be what characteristics you possess that makes you a good fit for that specific specialty. And the third section is what I call miscellaneous, a space in the personal statement where you take time to explain any hardships, such as not doing well in the US Emily Step 1 or having a year off. Also in this section, would include personalization to a specific program. The majority of personal statements will address these three sections and in that order. If you feel these three sections in your statement, you'll be good. Nothing negative will come out of it. However, I do believe applicants spend too much time trying to convince program directors on why they like radiology, in my case, and personal traits they think to have that go hand in hand with that specialty. This often leads to boring personal statements that don't really stand out in a crowd. For one thing, I think it's obvious you want to pursue this specific specialty because you're applying through ERAS and you're spending all that money. Every year, I read hundreds of personal statements with most of them having the same three to five reasons to like radiology in my case. That's where cliche is coming to play. And let me tell you, they are real. Let me give you some frequent flyer examples in radiology. The famous worst Waldo analogy, or the all too common story of a loved one with cancer and having the radiologist as the star of the show able to make a prompt diagnosis and difference. Or the analytical brainer that loves technology and the always persistent Sherlock Holmes and the detective work aficionado. None of these are wrong and in reality relate to the work radiologists do every day but they are no different from 50% of the other personal statements that we're gonna read. Keep in mind that an important part of the personal statement is to stand out. Personally, I would encourage applicants to focus on themselves and their journey. I would encourage students to make the personal statement unique and personal. I would brainstorm situations and events that have changed your life and describe how these events have affected the way you see yourself medicine, medical training, and patient care. Let's talk about specifics of what you should do and what you should not do when writing the personal statement. Things that you should do. Number one, keep it short. No more than one page long. Program directors read too many statements every year, and if it's too long, you're risking your statement not being read. Number two, write and rewrite. Grammar needs to be perfect. There are no excuses. This is your presentation letter to the most important job application in your life, and it should transmit that message. If English is your second language, get somebody to help you, but do not submit a personal statement with grammatical errors. Number three, get one or two friends, colleagues, or mentors to review and revise the statement. Remember that there are folks who are very good at grammar and others at suggesting better content so it's more engaging. You're probably gonna need both. Now let's talk about things you should not do. Number one, writing a hard to follow philosophical essay with complex language. Keep it simple and be clear in your intentions. This is not an English poetry competition. Don't write a novel that is open to multiple interpretations or something so obscure that doesn't even describe who you are. You can write a beautiful statement while keeping it simple and clear. Number two, don't use the personal statement to make excuses about any failures in your life. It is okay for you to explain situations in your life that led to hardship, but if you do, concentrate on all the things that help you overcome hardship. We understand failure because we all fail at something at some point in our lives. But what we want to know is the things you did to make it better and how it made you a better person. Number three, don't get controversial for the purpose of the personal statement and ERAS application. Everyone has unconscious biases, no matter who they are. For that reason, it's better to steer away from controversial political topics as you don't know how they'll be interpreted. Number four, don't use analogies that can easily be misinterpreted. Let's give some radiology examples. 
I'm antisocial and don't like to talk to people so much, so I think teleradiology will fit me well. Or, I love to travel and could work from anywhere in the world, and that will fit me in radiology because, you know, I'm a gypsy. Or, I'm looking for a lifestyle, and radiology just fits that. Not that there is anything inherently wrong with any of this, but you probably should keep these statements to yourself, as they can be misinterpreted by some. It's good to remember that this process is a game, much like an interview for any other job. You're selling yourself, period. And let's say it again. You cannot control the unconscious biases of others. You don't want an interviewer to assume you're lazy just because you like to travel and think that radiology would fit with that. So that's it. Now go get a pen or a keyboard and start writing. Good luck.